Okay, today we're going to identify some damaging communication patterns. Usually it's pretty easy to see them in someone else, but so often we neglect to acknowledge them in our own lives. I'm making the assumption that one of the reasons you're taking this course is so that you can learn how to be more effective in communication. So that you can be more effective in your relationships at work and in your life in general. Eh, having said that, I'm also assuming you're willing to look at patterns that others demonstrate but also the patterns you demonstrate so that you can make the appropriate changes. So here goes. Let's take a minute to think of things that other people do to annoy us or irritate us in their communications. Let's also look at what others do that shut us down or make us want to crawl in a hole and hide. Here's some that I can identify. Number one, interrupting before I'm finished talking. Two, Correcting what I've said or how I've said it rather than hearing the bigger message that I'm trying to convey. Three, sarcasm. Four, joking in a way that actually makes fun of me in a mean way. Five, trying to fix the problem I've been trying to talk about instead of just supporting me. Six, using a superior, judgmental, angry, or bored tone of voice. Seven, droning on and on without regard to whether or not I'm even interested. Number eight, not listening. Number nine, not answering a question. Number 10, talking in circles without getting to the point. Number 11, defensiveness. Number 12, when the other person is not focused on what I'm saying, no eye contact. And then there's the person who's always right. These are communication busters that I can think of just off the top of my head. I'm sure you can come up with a few of your own as well, depending on your personal situation. So, what do we do about them? There are two ways we need to look at them. First, how do we respond when someone does it to us? Second, how can we be aware of our own communication busting and change it? Remember, in whatever situation you find yourself, you want to be conscious and aware of your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Only then can you be the most effective communicator that you can be. You're no longer a victim to the winds of others or blown about by their careless actions and words. You're thoughtful, you're aware, and, you can, and change cannot happen until you're aware of what's going on and what you want to change. So. Here are a few suggestions for this, a couple of the communication busters that I've mentioned just so you can have an idea of how to thoughtfully respond even with the additional ones that you've come up with on your own. For example, interrupting before I'm finished talking. The temptation is to get annoyed and shut down. Remember, negative feelings have an impact not only on your mental health but on your physical health. So you want to stay away from them as much as you can. You, of course, need to acknowledge them if you want to change them, but don't hold on to them and nurture them and marinate in them. Simply say in a kindly, assertive voice, please let me finish. Second, correcting what I've said or how I've said it rather than hearing the bigger message that I'm trying to convey. Well, rather than taking offense, simply acknowledge and restate the bigger point by simply saying, point taken, but did you understand the larger issue? I'm actually concerned about the kids being out past curfew. Then of course there's sarcasm. If you're talking about a dream or an idea you have and someone respond, well, you and I both know that's never gonna happen. Just keep a steady, calm tone and restate your idea. Please take me seriously. It hurts my feelings when you don't. Four. Joking in a way that actually makes fun of me in a mean way. You know, most of us enjoy a good joke or someone who has a fun sense of humor, but generally no one likes to be the butt of someone's joke. You can respond in a couple of different ways. You can keep your own sense of humor and just say, ooh, that hurt, and move on. Or if it just seems to happen too often, you can make that point by saying, okay, that's enough now, or let's play fair. By addressing the issue, you show them that it does have an impact, but you're not going to dwell on it. Hmm. Then we've got trying to fix the problem I've been talking about instead of just trying to support me. 
If you know the person does this a lot and they need to be aware that it bothers you, you can even preempt the conversation by saying, I had a really bad day today and I just need to dump. Please don't try to fix it, just listen. Or if they try to fix it, just tell them you appreciate their thoughts, but you really just need a sounding board for now and you appreciate their willingness to do that. This happens often between husbands and wives or life partners. I hear this a lot in my counseling sessions. And then number six, using a superior, judgmental, or angry, or even bored tone of voice. Just ask them kindly to use a kind tone of voice. If it's someone who regularly uses a negative tone, you might just want to limit conversations with them. Or if you can't because it's your boss. That's when you learn to take a deep breath and detach and reassure yourself that it's their stuff, not you. And repeat your, inf your affirmations to yourself. And then there's a person who drones on and on and on without regard to whether or not you're interested. If you can't seem to get a word in edgewise, you might just show your interest. Remember the validating words, uh-huh, hmm. And then ask a question whenever you can slip it in and steer the conversation in another direction. Or if you have to, you can politely excuse yourself from the conversation. Number eight, not listening. You might just ask if, is there a better time we could talk? Not answering the question. Ah, in this case, they might not be able to answer or they might not want to answer. Ask them outright. If you can't answer the question or don't want to at this time, please just tell me. Or you can repeat the question. The question was, do you want to go to the party Saturday night? Or you can say, if you're not ready to answer at this time, when might you be able to answer? Number 10, talking in circles and circles without ever getting to the point. You might just tell them, I'm having a hard time following what you're saying. And ask them, can you just sum it up in a couple of words? Defensiveness, in this case, make sure your language is not accusatory or offensive. Or naturally, someone's first reaction is going to be defensive. Make sure you're communicating with I statements, as we discussed in the last video. You can even apologize if you think you've come on too strong and start over. I'm sorry, I'm not meaning to accuse you or threaten you. I just wanted to tell you that I get really nervous or worried when you don't call. I need to know you're safe. Can you call the next time you're running more than 30 minutes late? Just tell them what you need. And when the other person's really not focused on what I'm saying, like no eye contact, they're looking all over the room trying to network with the next best person. If that person is your kid, understand the kids are easily distracted. So get on his eye level and look him in the eye and tell him, you're important to me and this information is important for you. I need you to pay attention for a moment. If it's an adult, you might start the conversation with, can you give me three minutes of your time? Or 10 or whatever you need. But this will get the other person's attention and they'll likely put down what they're doing. You might also say, I need to talk to you, but if this isn't a good time, can you give me a time when we can have 30 uninterrupted minutes? That way, you're saying what you need and you can prepare them. Now, now we talk about the person who's always right. You can't fix that. You, you don't have to press your point if someone's unwilling to listen. Remember, when you're right, you're just right. There's usually no reason to prove it unless the house is on fire. You cannot insist on someone listening to your point of view, but you can, as I mentioned before, politely leave the conversation. Remember, with all these things that if you take a deep breath and detach yourself from the other person's strong delivery, it keeps you from getting sucked into negative emotions and reactiveness. That little bit of detaching gives you this much space to think things through a little more clearly. Now, one way to notice if you do these things is to pay attention to what people say to you about that. Do they say, you never listen. You're always judging me. Stop trying to fix me. Instead of being defensive yourself, just validate that you hear them and what they're saying and apologize. It's so much easier than you think. I'm sorry, I'll try to stop doing that. As soon as you catch yourself in one of the disruptive patterns, 
All you have to do is stop. You don't have to get flustered, just stop and choose another way. First requirement for change, as I said before, is awareness. Only then, only when you're aware of what you're doing and, and how you're feeling and how you're impacting others, only then can you make valid life-changing changes. Most of the world moves along in a pretty automa automated subconscious patterns, not realizing that they have a choice, that they're created to live an abundant and loving life. They think that they're victims of the whims of others, family patterns, and circumstances. This couldn't be further from the truth. You have everything within you already to be an amazing person and do whatever it is you feel is your purpose in this world. It does take conscious effort and application to do the work, to recognize where change is needed, and to make that change. And that's how what you're doing here, learning how to communicate more effectively. So I wish you all the best in that endeavor.